I think is in the experience of everybody feeling this sensation of getting not aligned with life, not able to flow with what is, even in your happy moment. And I was around the age of 25, 26, when a crisis came in my life. I thought my life was uh, beautiful and uh, working. Uh, it was something in me that was aching for more. And I've always been uh, religious, it was a gift of faith for me. And my prayer and Christianity uh, became more and more, not, give me not what I want, but allow me to stay with what you want. Of course, until that moment, God was felt as an external experience, as an external being to which um, give my prayers. And as I was observing, as I was going through this crisis, more and more was possible for me to observe how even the hardest moment, even what we call our failures or things that were not uh, easy in my life, they were painful. I could observe how that was a gift of God. And I started to become open to the realization that there was not something that was against me, that not even the events of my life that were difficult were against me. They were actually there to show me how to open my heart more. So really without me wanting this, and I think this is an important key point, but it literally happened, this opening. It happened this capacity to be able to recognize that the entire movement of life was happening for showing me how ultimately everything was love, how ultimately everything was one being. Now, this kind of uh, realization saying was love, was one being, was not uh, immediately recognizable uh, as the crisis was going through. It was not an intellectual understanding. When I use these words now, they are used uh, with the understanding of nowadays. Yeah. So at that time was just being in awe and in wonder and with a sense of gratefulness for something unknown and unexpected that was <laughs> coming into my life, apparently without being invited. Again, I say now apparently with the understanding of nowadays, but at that time was apparently uninvited. A, a different dimension was stepping in that was giving me the possibility to be grateful for life. So, um, as I said, I've always been a, a devotee. It was the gift of faith, because it's a gift. And my prayers became more and more just, that will be done. Thank you. Amen. You know? And the more this was happening, and the more this sense of gratefulness and openness was coming in, it's like a door was open, and uh, the universe could step through it. I didn't have a, a conscious, let's say, spiritual path, as I assume the majority of people watching this interview would have. If you end up watching this interview, I suppose, you know you are a seeker or you know you're seeking something called awakening, and this was not available for me. I didn't have any idea of what awakening was, and I didn't even know that it existed. I was very far away from what you could call nowadays spirituality. My spirituality was in the frame of Christianity. I thought more and more since I was a kid in an ample way. So for me, it was clear that what we called God in Christianity was the same uh, love and uh, being that was loved to any other religion. So there was no closing down towards uh, one path. Uh, I could see that that was my path, but there was a total openness to understand that even atheists, in a way, were in reality opening to the grace of life if they were going in their heart. So it was very, I think the word is ecumenical, as a very wide sense of openness. And so as I was going in this, I had moments in which for a fraction of a second, I was not present. 
and it was only what I saw. And these moments, nowadays, I could say glimpses of oneness, I didn't know what they were. I didn't know that other people had them. I didn't know that other people wrote book about it. I didn't know anything. I was taking them as special experiences, but I was not communicating them to anybody. I didn't have a spiritual guide, not even in Christianity at that point, but I was disappearing into a wider grace. And let's say I was watching the window in the night, uh, the part where I was was facing the park, and there was this strong wing hitting the trees. And I was watching the trees moved. It was dark and the green were, you know, like shushing beautifully. As I was watching the beauty of this gust of wind so strong, I was the wind and there was the tree and there was that movement of the leaf. But I, Katerina, was no more. And then again, you know, something came back after, I don't know, seconds, minutes, I suppose seconds, came back to a more normal frame. Or other moments in which I was watching a little puppy barking, and then I like, there was just the puppy barking, but nobody listening to the barking. These went into a crescendo. What happened at a certain point in this crescendo of experience, more and more and more and more of this kind, led me to a kind of peak experience in which after a lot of disappointment with a person that went away, I decided not to distract myself with nothing, but to stay with that thing, saying, okay, this arrived, this is the gift, let's stay with this. Naturally, nobody told me stay with your feelings just happened. And as I was staying with this uh, heartbroken, I felt this love growing in me until I recognized that I was the love that I was missing. And that created a tsunami in my body. You know, my body started trembling. I felt every single cell of my being filled with this liquid love that was multidimensionally exploding. It was a very peak experience. At that point, I thought I was dying. You know, uh, it was in the middle of the night as it happened. And I even sent a text to this poor guy saying, oh, I love you, I'm sorry, we are love, you know, all is good. And, and then like everything disappeared. And when I woke up in the morning, I was surprised to be alive. And I felt there was like this big scene watching something smaller that was Katerina. And uh, life felt like a bit like a comic book. I was almost expecting to see a balloon <laughs> on the head of people with the writing. And a new kind of dimension that nowadays I call detachment stepped in. And I could see that life is a life of, uh, was a life of a person that was meeting other people, but I was both this character, but also this, there were moments in which I was this all viewing point of view. Now, you have to remember that I never read any book about awakening. I never read any book about anything that wasn't like inclined to this. So I didn't have any concept of awakening, any. I didn't even know that people lo were looking for it. That's how far away I was from it. At that point, I expressed a desire anyway. I say, okay, I need a guide. And uh, the universe, life, God, that was all one thing at that point for me gave me this, it will give me a guide. I don't need to seek for it. You know, literally, you know, like in India say, when a disciple is ready, the master arrived. And after four months, a Welsh guy called the Vasa arrived in my life. And, uh, and after three, four days that I met him, maybe five, I saw who I was. Awakening was already happening, but it's like put last little piece there of understanding, very few words. Also because my English was not very good, so I was not understanding very much what he was saying. So it was more energetical, the shift. And boom, you know, I saw that Katharina never even existed. That my body was the body of the universe. That the I that I always thought to be was, has been creating all this. And life was made of my own consciousness manifested. 
And then after that, there were some years, of course, of adjustment, especially the first months, you know, first two years in general. My teacher invited me to share, although I really waited for eight years to be more formally given satsang. And it's been only after awakening that I read, you know, all the books that probably read, Visarkadatta, Ramana, because I was so curious of other people to which these kind of things happened. And the understanding, intellectual understanding came afterwards. That's what was maybe strange for me. There was no intellectual understanding, it was the experience, but the intellectual understanding came later. And then in 2011, I started to uh, teach more formally. And uh, I thought I was doing already things since 2003. And after that, here we are. And the understanding, you know, grew and other very important experience spiritually came. Uh, so I can say nowadays that awakening is the realization that we are not a person, that our I is the one consciousness that lives through everything and everybody. And that it's not the end of anything. Is the beginning of this realization that carries on for many years and it still carry on. So I don't know where it's going to lead me. I'm curious. If in the future we speak again, if there are news, I will update you. But, you know, it's a journey. It's a journey of opening up to our true self. It's a journey of love and gratefulness, of dissolving fear, uh, of dissolving the sense of separation that leads to fear. Is a journey of... Uh, service as well. In my case, more clear in the sense that there is the teaching, the same gratefulness that was there coming through that crisis when I was in my 20s is still here now that I'm almost 50, I'm 48, and is bringing a light of understanding that is filling my heart.